All right. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming to Professional Perspectives. And I want you all to welcome Andrea Lorenzo. Uh, she is a previous client of mine from some time back when I was tutoring English. She is from Brazil and she is currently working in Singapore. I'm not going to say a whole lot about her so that she'll have <laughs> plenty to say when we ask questions. But uh, as I said, she's working in Singapore and she works for a very famous uh, pharmaceutical company, uh, Merck, um, so also known as MSD, I, I believe in the field, most people know them by their three names. Um, and she holds an MBA in health management and a bachelor in, in pharmacy and biochemistry. But she is also, a, I mean, even if you're not into biochemistry, like me, she's a very interesting person. So we're so excited <laughs> to, to talk with her this evening. Uh, welcome, Andrea. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Vic. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I, Anita, why don't you start us off with your first question? Okay, thank you, Vicky. Uh, so, Andrea, welcome to the session and uh, really appreciate you sparing your time and joining us today. Uh, I'd like to know how you develop the passion. I see that you have a degree in pharmacy and in health. So what got you started in this field? Okay. When you are young, you, you never know what you are doing. And I have, I'm in a family that you have doctors, you have a pharmacist. So once of my auntie was pharmacist. So because that, I was interested on that and did my graduation on that. But when I started my, my university, I, I thought I would be the same than my aunt because she, in that moment, she had a, a lab to do some clinical analysis and started my, my career thinking, oh, I will do that. My specialization was that in pathology. And I, I joined in one lab after my degree. And in this lab, I was microbiologist. So I started in that field. And I wrote in that company, I wrote in one quality manual. When I wrote that, that company belongs for a, a group. And the same group, they have a industry as well. And because that manual, they thought, oh, she wrote well. And I think she, she met in, in an industry field. And they invited me to, to move for an industry uh, in a quality assurance area. So because that I started in, uh, was, was not for choosing, to be honest. Uh, I really enjoyed that, but at the beginning it was because uh someone invited me to go to the industry field and i really enjoy <laughs> and that was all in brazil that was in brazil so right. you uh entered the field because mostly because of family it sounds like it's more because my skills okay amazing vicky over to you so how did you I mean, usually, you know, a farm, the field of pharmaceuticals, you don't think of uh, moving from place to place. What made you decide to go from Brazil to Singapore or any other country? I work in the first company for 15 years. It's a local company. And because that I don't, I didn't think about to move me. But at the same time, I had some plans in my career and the company had another plan. The company decided not to grow up and sold the part of the company. After 15 years, I work in different kinds of areas, uh, quality assurance, regulatory affairs, operation, production, warehouse, many, many areas. And I decided that's the time that I needed to move it forward. In that moment, I decided I needed to work in a different a company, one global company, because I wanted to have one international experience. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. At the same time, I thought that. Uh, I didn't get that. 
I moved for another local company in Brazil, but I decided to move because that other company had more visibility on the market. And I stayed there for one year only because after that MSD hired me because they need someone with stereo experience, that's my background. In that moment, they need someone in Brazil that had experience with the surveillance agency in Brazil, the name is Anvisa. And I had this kind of experience because that they hired me. And in my interview, I said to my boss, and my boss is the plant, my ex-boss was the plant manager here in Singapore right now. Oh. And he, <laughs> <laughs> when he interviewed me, he asked me, why you, you wanted to, to join MSC? And I said, because I, for two reasons, because I wanted to understand what the global company works. And the second, because I want to, to have an international career in the future. And did you remember that? Did you have to, to study or did you have to learn anything new uh, for, to, in order to get a job in the international company compared to the local company? What you need to have me, uh, you, I had experience, but I didn't have in English. The problem was, they, they didn't find anyone else that with my experience. So they decided to hire me even if I didn't have my English. So at I the time you didn't speak any English? Uh, just English to travel, just a uh, kind of sentence I want to eat or <laughs> like I want to have some, just a few. Okay, so that but, was- But I could read because in the university, I needed to read the technical uh, books. So read and write some emails I could do, but speaking just a few words. All right, so you were obviously an adult when you had to learn English. Yes, that's true, more than 30s. <laughs> so one of my questions was about the role of language in your job. So was language, very important before you went to work for an international company? Yes, was important, uh, especially because nowadays you need to, to interact with people from other countries and for network is really important. Uh, what I did when I was in local company, uh, use Google Translator, uh -huh. uh, I tried to, and I, I'm good with communication in person. I could communicate well with people, even if I, don't, I didn't speak English so well, but I, 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 the communications are another ways to do. So what I did in the past was that, but my recommendation is to start as soon as possible. <laughs> well, do you think that there was a stereotype that people had be, uh, just because your English wasn't that good? Yes. That is a this is stereotype. And I passed on that many times. When I get this job in MSC, uh, they was open with me. Uh, you don't have in English, you are hiring you because you are you have the experience that you need. Uh, and they chair told me, I know you are working a lot here, but I recommend you to study in English. And the stereotype is because people, especially because you make a lot of mistakes when you speak, when you write, and if people think if you don't have a proper in English, it's because you're not so smart. I, I wanted to hear that from somebody else because I often tell my students that, that one of the reasons why we, we all actually need to improve our, our English is because of that stereotype that people think it has something to do with intelligence when it is has nothing to do with intelligence. So that's fantastic. Your your Merck or MSD hired you because of your experience, not because of your language. Yes, that's correct. Wow, that's wow. pretty good. Go ahead, Anita. So how many companies did you move and what roles did you have at each place? The first company I started in quality assurance. What is quality assurance is? You, you need to release the bets when you produce it, that you need to release the bets. So you need to read documentation. You need to create procedures, review procedures, qualification. Qualification is about equipment and make sure this equipment work well. 
and I was also in quality control uh, to make some analysis, um, micro, my previous experience, but also I move on to chemistry analysis and uh, packaging and manufacturing. In that company is more sterile products in manufacturing uh, surgery products for eyes and eye drops as well. Uh, these sterile products, there are a lot of control. Uh, and after a while, I moved for operations and I had a, a huge uh, responsibility in that company. I was responsible for the inventory building, warehouse, qualify vendors. In that moment that I decided after that to move on, uh, so in that company, to be honest with you, I was in all the areas for this field. Also regulatory affairs. Um, so because that I have it, just a few experience in everything because in a small company, we don't have a lot of issues to solve. Uh, but at the same time, I have this overview of how the, the fields you work. Yes. Do you, do you recommend that? getting an overview of a company that you work for? For me, it was a good experience. But at the same time, if you work in a, in a global company, for example, you can't have that. And at the same time, I recommend also to join in a, in a global company. So it's, it's more about how, what is your goal? I will tell you why, because for me, I work in operations. For me, it's, it's really important to understand the overall to operate. But depend, depends on what you want to do. For example, if you want to do quality, only quality, maybe it's not so important, but at the same time, of course, it's good. But at the same time, you spend time to achieve your goal. It's a really good experience. I can I can tell you I have a lot of fee. I, I, I mean, a quick decision because that. Because that experience, I can make decisions so easily. And people realize that. People can see. But at the same time, to get that, you spend more time than others. And, and do you mean like more time working daily or more time in length of time? What, what, what? Um... Because I more wanted time. to ask you about your daily working too. No, it's not more time in daily working. No, <laughs> it's more time. If, for example, in a local company, you need to work years and years to to pass through all of these areas, and after that, you need to try to change for one uh, company that is bigger. So that's that's the the trick situation. It's it's, oh. it's just choice. So how many years have you been with Merck? Uh, since 2014, three, seven, something. Seven years, and then quite a few years before with the local company, right? So we don't want you to tell us your age, but. <laughs> <laughs> but, I don't oh. have, but I don't have a problem. You can't uh, ask in my way, but my age, you can ask. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't let my students ask me my age, <laughs> but I wouldn't tell them my weight either. The, uh, so there, there actually are two things. No, but anyway, back to business. Um, so tell us about like your average work day. I, how many hours a day do you have to work and, and what do you do um, dealing with the other departments? Another this is it, kind of a, it's not a constantly, sometimes it depends on the projects that you are working with. Sometimes you need to work more than 12 hours per day. Sometimes it's 80 hours, but at least 80 hours. It's impossible to work less than 80 hours per day because in my field is operation. You need to deliver product. So it's constantly, and sometimes it's 24 hours per day. And so sometimes, for example, in my case, I need to cover, of course I don't need to work 24 hours, but if you have some issues in other shifts, I need to help you on that. Uh, my, to answer my daily, I started in usually 8 a.m. Uh, I have a meeting, back-to-back -back meetings. 
is a lot of meetings. In this kind of company, you have a lot of meetings. And at the same time, you need to support your team while you're, you're on meetings. That means between meetings, you need to support someone else. It is really hard. And at the end of the day, that I, I say I start to work. After all this meeting during the full day, I, I can have time to approve some document or to review one document or to talk with someone that you need. It's, it's really hard, uh, but I, I'm not the only one. I can see all my colleagues in the same situation. So it sounds And you're like asking me how, how I interact with other areas. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more in the, during the meetings, and if I have some issues, or if someone has some issue and need my help, usually they set up a meeting to discuss, especially right now because COVID, but if they are on site, usually I'm going there every day, uh, just meet and discuss. Uh, the interaction is, I, I cannot say is any different than other areas and in other companies, it's the same. The, you need to interact a lot with other areas, especially- well, It sounds like areas. you didn't just need a degree in pharmaceuticals, you needed a degree, you needed to have management experience and leadership experience. And... In my case, it's more leadership experience, management experience, but at the same time, you need to have technical skills. I will tell you what, what? what could be engine technical, te technical skills. For yeah. example, you can be engineer, you can be chemistry, I will tell you why. Most of the parts of my day, for example, I'm, do, uh, I'm in the meetings, but this meeting is also technical meetings to make decision what you are doing. For example, you are choosing this way to do or the other way. If you don't have the background, the technical background to understand what is the best way to do, you can do that. So you need a, a technical uh, background, not necessarily degree. Uh, uh, you can have a degree in, in, in any field, but you need some experience in technical uh, issues. So uh, in this field that you are, you did different roles and different profiles. And what is it about packaging that appeals to you? And uh, what exactly does the role entail basically for the benefit of our students okay packaging happened to me after uh, i i hired in msd in one site that was responsible for sterile product it was not packaging uh, this site when i joined i know they will be closed because the the, the company decided to to cease the operation in that site uh, when the site was closed, I tried to move it uh, international. I tried in Europe for some sites, but I couldn't. I, I did, didn't have some job position that matched with me. And then another uh, site in Brazil, I moved to this site. This site was mainly a packaging site. It's the site in MSD in that moment that supply to Latin America. So they receive the bulk, bulk is the tablet around the world and package it to supply America Latina. Uh, because that uh, I increased my knowledge in package. Of course, in the local company I had some experience in packaging and also in the first uh, site MSD, some experience in packaging, but in that site is, is a mainly a, a package site. The volume was so huge. Uh, and I, I work with the new quality manual there. Uh, so I, I increased my knowledge in packaging. And in, in 2020, Singapore decided to have a, a package site for vaccine to supply Asia Pacific. And because that I applied, I have, I have experience, I went to, I went to move. I applied not, not I applied not only for Singapore, I also applied for another packaging site in US. But in that moment, US see the visa because it was during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. The visa from Brazil in US it was closed, so Singapore was easy to come. And they they decided to hire me. 
uh, this is for, so I was a startup leader for packaging here. So uh, started at the beginning, ha I hired people, I create a process, I create procedures, I build a team. Will you, have to, will you have to learn some new things now being transferred to another department? Uh, you're saying the department that I'm going right now? You said you're going to a bio. Yeah, but I, I don't think it is group knows because I told you before. So just where you know everyone, I'm moving for biotech is another site here in Singapore as well. Uh, I not exactly because my background is sterile. So technical technical knowledge I have and it's kind of a reorganization uh, because some managers left the company. So I mean the process to hire another people. So you'll be kind of a reorganization again. I needed to uh, change, the, develop the people and change some process. Okay. Speaking of hiring, there was something on your web, on your uh, LinkedIn profile that I wanted to ask you about. You wrote on your LinkedIn profile, or you say, quote, I see people who dare to invent, unquote. Mm -hmm. So could you explain uh, more what you mean by that and tell us your role in hiring? Okay, my role in hiring uh, directly is managers because I'm the second level of manager. So I hire the, the level uh, below me. So uh, hiring managers uh, and the decision I do with my indirect uh, reports, for example, these managers that I, I hired, hire operational people, technicians, people that work on the machine, more operational people. My role in, for this indirect report is more decision. Uh, and my role for people that uh, I'm hiring is not only decision, but I also I need to have a, I have a help, for example, the talent acquisition, uh, that uh, giving me the feedback in the pool of a curriculum to interview. And I just need to interview and make decision who I interview and who are you hiring. Uh, that's my role for hiring. Uh, about your question on my LinkedIn is, I believe we, you need to, you don't need to invent. I put the word there is invent, but invent for me in my concept that I put there is not a create something new. It's not invent something. It's just create a new ways of doing things. Uh, it's kind of a think outside the box. Don't say yes. Just try to challenge me, try to challenge the status quo that I'm looking for. That's what you're looking for. Yeah. People who think outside the box. Yeah. And challenge the status quo. So if you are in Merck, if not Merck, then where? Did you have goals in mind of which companies you would like to be part of or you just went with the flow in your career? I, I, I wouldn't say uh, go to the flow. I have a really structured uh, career plan. My career plan is staying MSD. Yes, it is. Uh, but it is not about the, the company. It's about my career. So, and I communicate that to the company, to my senior managers, what I want to be and in which time I want to be. And that's it starts at the beginning, that company. When I join, I already communicate. I want to have international experience. Even when I didn't get that, I still communicate in there. I want to, to have one uh, position uh, and I, I, I didn't have a, a preference, could be anywhere. So that was communicated many times. And I still communicate my next steps. I'm going to biotech because I communicate that. Oh. I communicate my next step is to have experience in biotech. I have experience in sterile. I have experience in, in packaging, but I didn't have experience in biotech. 
And why biotech? Because my next goal is to, to go for an, another field for medical device or animal health. So I have this plan. So this plan could be in MSC, could be another company, but I have my career plan. That's very interesting. And I, so I'm going to, you know, I teach, you know, English for employability and we do a lot of resumes. And for these freshers, I usually tell them that it's not about them. Well, there's a balance. Of course, they need to do what they love and they need to follow their plans and their dreams. But it's also about what you're going to bring to the table with a company. So have you always been that way? Or did at the very beginning of your career, did you have to think about the company or no? Maybe I'm wrong in my advice to my students. At the beginning of my career, I didn't have a mentor to tell me I need to do something different. So I strongly recommend to have one career plan. And that career plan belongs to you personally, not to the company. You need to communicate what you want, but I agree with you, there is a balance. You need to communicate what you want and need to find a way for the company give you back, but it also you need to give back. So it's always a contract. Uh, you need to give something to receive something. I start to do that when I communicate I'm moving because uh, my career was more important than, than the company when I decided to move. Uh -huh. I spend a lot of time to have the courage to do that, to be honest. And if I can uh, advise something, is do some self-assessment, understanding what you work well, understanding what you really want to do, what you really what you perform well. Uh, and try to find a way to enjoy what you do uh, in, in the work that you are doing. But at the same time, looking forward for something to, to move forward for something else that you also want to do. Uh, communicate what you want to do in the future. That, that not means you are not working what you are working right now. Mm -hmm. Just means you want to do something else in the future. And you can communicate. In, in five years, I want to do that. In two years. But at the same time, if you communicate that, make sure you, are, you have a plan. You have a development plan to get that. And would you say that's your edge? That's your cutting edge, the fact that you have a plan and you are taking steps toward the plan and the goals? Is that yes. your? Yes, yes. But if, for example, my plan is to move in, inter internationally in 2017 and I get in 2020. That's okay because you have a plan, you, have, you try to develop yourself for that, but sometimes because they need to combine the opportunity with your plan. Sometimes it's not at the same time, but you need to, to understand what you need to do to get that in the right moment. When, when the opportunity appear, you have to be ready. You have to be ready. Go ahead, I can see Anita's ready for another question. <laughs> yes, I am. So no journey is without setbacks and uh, a lot of pluses. So the graph is always up and down. Um, how would you see your journey and what would you, uh, what wisdom would you like to impart to the students? I don't know if I get your, your question so well. Could you repeat that? Okay. So, any journey, your journey has had maybe some setbacks, some obstacles, some problems, and everybody goes through this. And there are people who will feel sad, unhappy, and they may even give up. So what did you do when you had problems? Okay. Uh, I'm a super positive person. I, I always try to do something different. But I will give you one, one example that happened in a few years ago when I moved to Singapore. And maybe Vicky uh, could see something of this movement because that was the first time in my life that I try, not try, but I think about to give up and come back to my comfort zone. When I moved to Singapore, was hard for me because it was a totally different culture. 
And the ways of thinking was totally different. I started to learn about deductive thinking, inductive thinking, because that was the difference. Singapore is more logical, more deductive. And my, my ways of thinking was more inductive as a Brazilian, because it's the how you are educated in my country. When I get here, I start, there are a lot of things that people don't understand what I'm, what I'm talking about, about language. And I also don't understand what they are talking about. Uh, and the same time, that there, there's a barrier for English. Sometimes I didn't know if it is because I didn't understand them because the English, or if I didn't understand, I didn't get what they want. I was super stressful. And I, it's kind of, I didn't perform well at the beginning, to be honest. And that was the first moment in my career that I said, I'm not performing well. I, maybe I need to come back to Brazil because there I'm comfortable. It's kind of a come back for my comfort zone. But, but uh, I didn't because I'm still here and I decided not to do that, of course. Uh, but it was hard, it was not easy. Uh, I think my concern is step by step. What I did, I did one step back and okay, I could not be the Andrea that I was in my entire life. Just give a step back and start. That's it. Sometimes I think you need to do two steps back to do three for roads. Yes. Can you so, give an example of how you did that? For giving a step back? Ah, don't try to do, to perform, about performance. Uh, I didn't deliver everything that I used to do at the beginning. So I delay sometimes, not delay, of course I, I have disagreement to delay, but sometimes I delay something in order to do all the things that I used to do in the past. And how did you get over the culture shock and the, the trying to understand, did you study? Did you, how, how, how did it, or did you just let time take care of it? I uh, know I studied, uh, I did do one course here. Uh, the company gave me one course, but it's not enough. I didn't realize when I have this, I have a lot of assessment to understand the difference of culture, but it's not enough. I think when you feel your skin is totally different. Uh, what I did, I, I had support from you, for example, to help me in my English. You support me with some meetings. Remember, you I have to present something and I present to you to help me on that. And also I have psychological support. I try I met I had one uh, psychoanalysis uh, because I was not depression, not that, but uh, uh, it's kind of to not get in that moment, to not get the depression. I, I started to have one psychoanalysis to help me to pass through on that moment. Oh, that's great. So you reached out and you got help. You recognized it. Um, I, before we open it up for, for uh, the audience to ask you questions, I wanted to ask about um, just your being single there and uh, because I happen to know that you're single, but I also happen to know that you don't let it stop you from doing new things and, <laughs> and meeting new people. And uh, so um, has it been difficult? And um, has it been a hindrance? Has it been a blessing? Uh, talk about a little bit because we obviously have so many single women. I mean, all, all of our students right now are, or at least I think most of them are single, so, but. When, when when you are single in your country, you move around because I moved many times in my country and that was not a problem. Because you have support for friends, for family, even if you don't live in the same city. When I get to Singapore, uh, here is a safe country. As a safe country, you can do, you can walk around 2 a.m. as a woman, no issue on that. Yeah, it's amazing, it's amazing. You can put your phone, your handphone in a, in a table and go to the toilet. There is no issue on the restaurant. It's really safe. It's incredible. It's, it's really incredible. 
Uh, but at the same time, you, I have one experience. One day I was in an emergency in the hospital. Uh, it was not a big deal, it was not a big issue, but they asked me for my emergency contact. And I didn't have one. So I was so surprised. No, I don't have anyone to, to complete that. And that, I said the attendance, I don't have one. And after that, I realized if something happened with me, I'm single in the other side of the road, what do you do? Uh, you need to create a help chain. I call help chain is kind of a friends in the same situation that can help you. So I have a lot of friends in the same situation than me. And not always single, some married is not a problem to help me uh, on that. And one of my friends, I told her, she's Brazilian. I put you in all my emergency contacts and she's doing the same. <laughs> because it's not easy, it's not, especially during pandemic because I need to stay at home many hours, many days. And it's difficult. You need to find uh, some people in the same situation than me. Do you That's do things by yourself or do you do things only with other people? As uh, far as, you know, adventures and events and things like that. No, if other people, then there is a lot of, when you enter in this life, you, you realize a lot of people is in the same situation. That is, that is a app for international people uh, with a lot of events uh, and people meet each other and start to be a group of friends. So I have a lot of a group of friends uh, right now because some people in the same situation start, one day you do, you find one app to do a tracking and you find some, some friends and another one to do a dinner and start another friend. So you're building, your so your friends are are they from all other countries or are they Singaporeans? No, for another country, Singaporeans is difficult. No, no, I don't have any friends from Singapore. I have a permanent resident in France, but not really Singaporean. Okay. All right. Uh, Anita, did you have another question? Uh, I think let's open it. Okay, I'm going to change the view to gallery. So uh, you can either put your question in the chat or you can uh, unmute yourself and ask Andrea a question. I know that some of you came in late, probably you got home late, so the, the, you, but don't, you, you can ask any question you'd like. Don't be shy. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, good, good evening, ma'am. My name is Manish. Have you ever gotten pressure from your company? If yes, how do you handle it? Have you ever gotten what from your company, Manish? I didn't pressure. know. Anita, pressure did you Pressure or load? Pressure. Pressure yes. from your pressure. company. Ah, pressure, if stress, yes, pressure you from you. Okay, and how do you handle it? All right, good question, Manish. Okay, that's, that's not, the, um, how can I explain that? Unusual. That's the daily situation. So what I handle that, and don't expect something different. Uh, this kind of a industry life is not easy in pharmaceutical company, a lot of pressure. So what I handle that, uh, I'm doing a lot of things outside the company. Uh, I have the class uh, for dancing. I, I'm going to the gym, more physical exercise and go out for dinner with friends. That energizes me. But at the same time, you need to understand what is good for you. Uh, I learned about that. Not everyone is a extrovert person. If you are an introverted person, maybe read a book or watch a film. Uh, reorganize re you more than go out. So you need to find a way for you. For or meditation, for me, no. For me, I need to go out. I need to do some physical exercise that help me on, to release my pressure, to release my stress. Okay. And that made me think of something else that I forgot to ask you about. 
what motivates you, not just in, when you're in a stressful situation, and maybe it's just your career plan, but uh, do you have any other motivations for getting up in the morning and doing the best job that you can do? Yes, the thing that motivates me is enjoying what I'm doing. Uh, I realize that people are different to how motivate yourself. Some people is to enjoy, some people is recognition, if you recognize, some people is feeling belong. Uh, for me, I, I mean, 100% sure is enjoying. What do you do for that? Of course, I'm not doing everything that I, that I like to do. I try to find a way in, in each task to do something else that I like. I, I can give you an example. For example, I don't like to review procedure and then I have to do a lot of this. But when I have to do that, I always have, I always facilitate a meeting with my team and analyze the procedure and get some feedback from them because that's the things that I want to do. I want to talk with people. I want to interact with people. So when I, can, when I have to do something that I don't like, I try to find one thing that I like and come by. Oh, that's good advice. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? There is a question in the chat box. Okay. Go ahead, Anita. So there are, in the corporate world, so from students getting into the world of work, what are the things that we need to be aware of or to be careful of as we step into work? Like corporate, the corporate world, you mean? Yes, yes, corporate world. I don't think you need to be aware because there are a lot of you on board in course that the company train you and global company always have this. So I don't think you need to be aware of, about anything else because there are a lot of trainings for this process about compliance, uh, what you can do, what you cannot do. There are a lot of it, this kind of training. So I don't think you need to be aware. Uh, you just need to be aware in this kind of company, you need to follow the rule. But you don't need to be aware what is the rule is because you'll be trained for that. Uh, and what you have to expect, uh, My, my, my point of view is you need to experiment. Just go experiment and see if you want or not, if, if it fits for you or not. Sometimes not. Just experiment. She's, Andrea is a lady after my own heart. I, <laughs> yeah. um, that's, that's, that's really good. Yes, trial and error, experiment. All right, there's another uh, question in the chat. Um, so, uh, startups, you know, there's, uh, in fact, there's several students uh, here tonight who are in my BCom, which is Bachelor of Commerce, and many of them want to be entrepreneurs. They want, and you're in that division of startups, and can you give um, any uh, advice or something that you would like to share about startups with the students? Okay, startup for me, the company that I work is more about, it's not a, a, a company, but it's part of the company, for example, packaging or a new product, you build one, one build the exact physical one and all the things together, qualification, a lot of things. So it's, it's, if you think about entrepreneur, I don't have any experience to be honest. Uh, and I don't think he, I can compare because it's totally different when you have your one startup as entrepreneur, as a, everything new. Uh, in, I don't have this experience. I, I don't think I can advise on that. Okay. Okay, so her startup is within a company, not its own company. Yes. Okay. All right. Small companies, large companies. What is the advantage? 
Yes. A uh, company or a large company? Is that the question? A small company or a large company, which one is better? Do you mean to uh, work for? Anita, you mean to work for? To work for and yes, what is better in terms of work culture, work environment? Where is it better? Like you were working in Brazil earlier in a, probably a smaller company and then you moved to a global company, which is a multinational. Uh -huh. So uh, what was the advantage when you were working in the small company earlier? Sorry, I'm using the word small, which is not fair, but... No, it's small, it's small, that's okay. Is that? <laughs> so uh, yeah, over there versus coming to a global company. Okay, I would, not, I would not say better or not is, I would say the advantage and pros and cons. Uh, when you work in a small company, you have opportunities to learn different kind of things. You have opportunities to have, ah, maybe if you want to have your own startup, that's the best way to learn. Because when you are in a small company, you can walk around a lot of areas, you can interact with a lot of areas. You can have more um, experience and interactions. So for a startup, I think a small company is the best way to have experience. Uh, when you, uh, the disadvantage, uh, in a small company, salary is not the same. Uh, only if you have the difference between salaries for one a uh, low position in one high level position is so huge and to get a high level position is so difficult if you are in a high level position in a small company you were you well but if you are in a low position not uh, and bonus they don't have is not a good one so salary is one disadvantage and also for compliance not all the I'm not saying all, but not all the companies follow the compliance. Uh, for my area, for pharmaceutical, I'm kind of scared for some companies that I know uh, because it's health. You deliver products for saving lives, not to, uh, make something wrong. So uh, you just need to be careful on that. But it, I'm not saying all the companies, but some of them. In a big company, you don't have this kind of a problem. You can sleep well, but at the same time, uh, there are a lot of work to do to activate this level, this level of compliance, this level of details. You need to work it too much, much more than a, than a small company. So that's the difference. You need to work much more, and at the same time, uh, you don't have uh, this experience for many in the areas. You need to, you usually you stay for years in in one position. Okay, so somebody had their hand up while you were talking. Navia, do you have a, did you have a question for Andrea? Yes, ma'am. Can I ask a question? Go ahead. Uh, actually, I'm a, I'm a bit interested too in the in that field. So I want to ask what makes the ma'am uh, feel more pressured or like uh, something that made difficult to that ma'am while working or like uh, she felt regretful for uh, not doing it before or something like that ma'am. Regret for what? For not doing? Yeah, do, you, do I, I, if I understand Navya correctly, I think she wants to know, um, if you have any regrets of, of anything that you wish that you would have done um, and anything that you want to emphasize that you're glad that you did do. Is that correct, Navia? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, let me think. Um, I'm not a kind of person that regrets a lot. <laughs> I will tell you why. I think mistakes are part of the process. You, you you can be kind with yourself and you are not to do something right all the time. You, you can't do a, a big mistake, but a little mistake is part of the process and you, you, you need to learn of this mistake. 
So I don't think it's, this is a big deal. I, the only regret maybe that I can have is not to, I told you, I spent 15 years in, in the first company. I think the only regret is to not left this company before. But I think, but at the same time, I don't regret. In that moment, it was good for me. I had a good salary, I had a good experience, it was good in that moment. But it, of course, if I look back, I can say, oh, maybe I should have left the company before. But at the same time, it, that's okay. <laughs> it's, it's the things that I could do in that moment. Uh, I, you ask about advice as well, right? Yes, yes, please. Uh, the advice is just understand yourself because you, you can do everything that follow your heart. If you want to do, it's still doing. If you don't want, don't do. Don't do things that you don't want to do. Uh, and don't press yourself to do something else if you're not ready for that. So follow your, your heart, be prepared, but follow your heart as well. Great advice. So Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, you. Donna, for your question. Uh, <laughs> Manish asked if you have ever scolded your company's seniors. Now, you maybe understand that. I'm not sure I understand it. I think he means, have you ever had to, I don't know, reprimand or say something negative to anybody who is above you? I wouldn't say something wrong, or I always challenge my seniors manager. I think that's my style. It's not because I'm challenged. I, I'm, it's not because I don't believe them. It's not because that. It's only because I want to have a different perspective, and I always have some different perspective. So I always uh, have some conflict. I don't, I, I, I'm not kind of person that I avoid conflict. I mean, really comfortable to have the conflict, but it is a professional conflict. It's things that I believe in, things that I think is, is wrong or well. So I, I, I don't have this kind of problem and I have a lot of examples. All right, thank you. Uh, Pratika, did you have a question? I saw somebody had their hand up. Yes. But but now I don't see her. Oh, it's in the chat. Okay. How do you deal with corporate politics? I do well, to be honest. I, I always read the, poli the policy and try to have me... Uh, one day, one, one, my, I have a friend from ATR in Brazil and she told me, Andrea, you are super formal. And I asked her, what are you saying about formal? And she said, you know what you have to tell. You know uh, who you are telling that and why you are telling that. You are super strategic in, in that way. It's because I think I'm a strategic person and I think I know the, the rule, uh, what I have to do and who I need to couple with who I need to tell about something. So I don't have a problem with this corporate politics. Uh, maybe because I couple with many things in my, in my career. So you find a way to survive in that environment. But it, for me, it's maybe right now, to be honest, it's natural. I don't think. All right. Great. Well, we have time for one more question, if there is one, and then we would like to take a picture with you, Andrea, give you a little <laughs> souvenir of your time with us and our souvenir. But is there one more question before we close? Did we get all of ours, Anita? Yes, we did. Okay. Um, how can you help packaging students? I don't understand that question, Manish. Maybe it's people that wanted to work in packaging. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Uh, do you have any advice or how you can help them? Yes, he says yes. How I personally, or how I can help is uh, help you? Guide. Huh? I believe guide them. Guide them. I guide. Okay. Uh, in, 
in India, I know that a lot of the companies that work with packaging, I think you, you should have some kind of experience. I could see here in Singapore, they hired a lot of people with previous experience in India, in pharmaceutical company, mm -hmm. a lot. Oh, and I would just say more than 50 of my people that work with me was from India and wow. with, with with previous experience in, in pharmaceutical company in India. India and some people moved to, Ma to, move to Malaysia, but it, most of them comes from India with a previous experience in pharmaceutical company. I think that's a, a good advice because I, I, I have this experience here. <laughs> try, to, try to find one uh, pharmaceutical company and start. Okay, one more, uh, Navi, do you have a quick question? <clears throat> Yes, ma'am. Uh, what is the most difficult thing that you felt you in your professional career? May I know? More difficult uh, to balance work-life balance. <laughs> uh, yes, it's really difficult to find a, to find time to to make dinner, for example. <laughs> yeah, is is really hard. Yes. All right, Andrea, it's been so wonderful. Much, uh, can I ask everyone to put their videos on for just a moment so I can get a picture for us and for Andrea? Thank you. Send it to me, Vic. I will send it to you, yes. There's Romani, Naina, Manish. Manish, you're in the, your hat is covering your, your hat is making your face dark. I can't see, ah, there you go. There, I can see your face. Okay. Manisha? There's a few people on my bottom row. Sometimes they're not able to. So, Navia, are you gonna turn your video on? Navia? Ma'am, here it's dark, ma'am. Oh, no power okay. all right. Where are you? Where it's dark? Is that dark here yet? No power supply, ma'am. No, ma oh, okay. All right. Well, I'm going to count to three. One, two, three. Thank you. All right. I will send that to you. Everyone give Andrea a hand and just our... Uh, sincere gratitude for taking the time to just come and, and share with us. Um, it was just wonderful to talk with you and, and to hear your insights. Thank you for having me here. Welcome. All right. Thank you all. So and have a good evening. And just one little reminder this week, uh, Friday is the debate club and the last class for the creative writing class. So. Thanks, everybody. Bye, Andrea. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome. My pleasure. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm.